When it comes to designing your dream garden, there's lots of things to take into account. Your garden doesn't sit on its own. It's got to complement and sit in with other things in the area, whether it be your neighbours, the streetscape, or what your house looks like. Now, this beautiful old house deserves a beautiful garden. So you've got to pay respect to the past, but also put in the modern elements so you and your family can enjoy the outdoors. The house might be over 100 years old, but when they built it, it was exactly like building a new house today. They want bang for their buck and they want to show the community that they're here and they've made it. And that's exactly what they've done. They've got a big, wide house, but it would have been quite narrow, only about two rooms deep. But from the street, it looked like it was a castle. And when you've got a big, expansive garden like this, you can do a couple of things. The first is you can make it look more like a park than a front yard. And they've achieved that by putting in these big, deep garden beds. This garden's probably seven metres deep. And when you have such a big garden, you can achieve a few other things. You can create layers, contrast with different plants and their foliage, and give the garden a bit of scale compared to the house. At the front here, you've got an old-fashioned plant like Virginia. And at the back, we've got the oak-leafed hydrangea. The best thing about this garden is it's so heavily planted, I can't see a weed. And if there's no weeds, there's no weeding. Being such a large front yard, there's lots of entries and exits. There's the pedestrian path, the driveway and the garage. Now, if they all had formal paths each, this would look more like a public building with all those paths running everywhere. But they've got these giant steppers. Now, I'm not normally a fan of steppers to the front door because you've got to look where you're walking, but because of the size of these, they're dead easy to walk on. Now, formal paths will give you a formal look, but because of the size and scale of these, they still give you a sense of grandeur. And when you get into the backyard, you've got some of the elements of the front yard, but a lot of more modern architectural things. There's a lot of level changes. If there was a slope, it would probably fall three or four metres from the back fence to the house. But with this wall running through it, you've created large rooms. The blue stone which you saw out in the front yard, well, there's smaller pieces, but there's more of them. So it's not a path, it's more of a patio. And the water feature, well, I can't hear any traffic or neighbours because of that beautiful sound of the water. One of the toughest things about doing your own garden design is working out how to please everyone in the family. Chances are, if you've got little ones, they're nagging you for a trampoline. So something like this doesn't have to be ugly, but can still be a ton of fun. The adults can get onto it easy. The kids can still have fun, but be nice and safe. And when they grow out of it, well, you can just fill it in, turf over the top, or you can plan it out. Woohoo! Look, I'm high! <laughs> The upper level of this garden, well, it took me a few minutes to get my head around it. But now that I'm in it, I realise I want to stay here, and that's the secret. It's not like you're in a suburban suburb of Melbourne. It's like you're in a botanic garden somewhere. I love the potential of this buxus here. When it's finally matured and bald, it's going to look like a set of clouds. And the plants that are around the borders of the past, like the little mandra, it's called little con, and these euphorbias, are just plants that you don't see in every garden, making this special and unique. 